Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Today we don't really have a review, but rather we're going to be comparing the Umarex Beretta licensed Model 84 FS against an actual Beretta Model 84 FS. Well, actually the real one is an 85 F, but it's essentially the same thing, just uh, a thinner grip because it has a single stack mag versus a double stack, which we'll get into here in just a moment. But first of all, let's talk about the star of the show. Um, as my normal viewers know, I do collect military surplus, specifically the Beretta 80 series pistols. And I recently kind of just stumbled across this little Umarex um, BB pistol of the 84 FS. Thought it was kind of cool, was kind of curious, um, watched a few videos on it, and it seems to have a pretty good review. And I figured, why the heck not? <laughs> Um, don't really plan on shooting this much. I'm sure eventually at some point I will shoot it. Um, but I just kind of got it as a novelty to add into my actual Beretta 80 series collection. I did get this off of Amazon for right around uh, like 85 or 90 bucks. You might be able to find it cheaper elsewhere. Um, but it did come in a nice little cardboard box here. As you can see, it is licensed from Beretta, which is kind of interesting because... Um, I know HK has some licensed 22 long rifle um, MP5s, and I do believe those are actually made by Umarex, um, who makes this here BB pistol. Um, now, a lot of the videos I've seen, they mentioned how these are made in Germany. I do believe Umarex is based out of Germany. However, this one is actually made in Taiwan. It's not just the box, it actually says it on the gun as well. So I don't know if newer production is actually just now in Germany, if people misspoke, or excuse me, newer production is now in Taiwan and people just misspoke and said Germany since they're based out of Germany, or if because I'm in the US, um, my distribution comes from Taiwan rather than Germany. I have no clue, but um, it is made in Taiwan. Here are some of your stats, all of your warning information. And the box is even kind of nice on the inside. It's got print there. It did come with a single layer of bubble wrap. Gun safety rules. Your owner's manual, which seems to be pretty decent. Has a fair amount of information in there. And then what do we got here? Uh, basically just warranty information saying if you have any issues, return it to them. Here we do have a readout of the feet per second. So this is the uh, 84FS. 360 feet per second is the velocity. The danger distance is 300 yards. Someone that's into airsoft and BB guns explained to me what the danger distance is. Is that just the point at which, you know, it loses velocity and doesn't travel? Um, but you even got a little rubber pad in here to make sure it's all nice and secure. Um, so you know, decent packaging, I guess. It's a nicer box and I get a lot of my surplus handguns in, so I'm okay with it. So basically the reviews I've seen on this are pretty positive. One thing they do mention a whole bunch is about how good the quality is. Um, and I will say handling this, obviously I can tell the, you know, it is pretty much all metal, but it's definitely a cheaper, lighter, um, type of metal um, and one of my biggest complaints and I don't know if it's just mine but this is a two-piece frame you can see the seam down here but whenever I put this mag in if I have my fingers on the front strap here I can feel like the frame like wobbling like there's no adhesive here these two pieces are just pushing up against each other and aren't actually attached to one another which is rather annoying so I don't know if it's just this example or what the story on that is but that's one thing I noticed right away other than that as far as I can tell the feel um, and finish of it is decent the hammer is polymer and these controls might be actually yeah I think that's polymer the trigger might be metal and then I think the safety lever is polymer but this hammer also just feels very cheap and while we're on the topic there, uh, everything has been safety checked. No BBs, no CO2. And the same goes for all of the other 
handguns we will have out here. I'll give you guys a real quick brief history towards the end if I can remember. So I feel like if you guys are really into BB guns, then you wouldn't mind knowing some of the history behind the actual firearms you are collecting. You know, the, of the BB gun variants. All right, we are already running out of room here. So, also worth pointing out, the version that I have out here that looks the most like this is actually the single stack version rather than the double stack, meaning it uses a skinny mag rather than a fat mag, therefore the grip is a little bit thinner. But mechanically, operation, the slide and barrel, everything else is the exact same. Even the front of the frame is the same. It's just the grip portion that's different. I do have an 81 out here. Um, this essentially is an 84, except it is chambered in 32 ACP rather than 380. Um, and this is an original version. These guns went through several life changes. The 84 would start out as the 84. Then you'd have the 84B. Then you'd have the 84BB, which I have an 85BB right here. And then you'd have the 84F, and that's when we start to look like these. Um, dull black finish. Previously, they had a blued slide with an anodized frame. Um, and then they would come out with the FS, and the F and the FS visually look visually look identical to one another it's just the fs had a few more eternal safety changes done to it um so yeah they look identical though other than that so um our umarex here is a pretty close copy to these but right away when i was watching the videos i did see some things that were jumping out to me and a lot of people also are like oh this is a dead copy for the Breda 80 Cheetah. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, I'm not saying it's a horrible take on it, but there's definitely some differences. Another thing I've noticed a lot of people saying, especially these people mostly review BB guns, so they might not be that familiar with actual firearms. That's no fault of their own. Uh, but a lot of people are saying this is just a scaled down 92, which while visually it does look like a scaled down 92, this is a 92S, this is the second variation of the 92. Um, mechanically, they are different. They do have a very similar trigger mechanism, um, but the design at which the gun functions are completely different. These are direct blowbacks, the 80 series guns. And then the 92 is actually a um, dropping lug that Beretta borrow the design from uh, the P38. So, looks like a scaled down 92, absolutely does, but it is not actually a scaled down 92. So, let's start pointing out some of the changes, I guess, or differences, rather. The barrel diameter um, compared to the actual one here, let me compare to how I have these written down. I'm gonna, and at some point I'm going to say 84 when I mean 85, etc. That's bound to happen. So the Umar X barrel, um, I measured at 12.9 millimeters using the cheapest calipers I could find on Amazon. And then the barrel on the um, actual Beretta measured at 13.2 millimeters. So a real slight difference, not a big change there. And as these guns did evolve, they actually did change the thickness of the barrels. So that's one thing I meant to do. I was going to measure the thickness of my Beretta 81, which is the original series. So it will be the thinnest barrel. Well, actually, that's in 32 ACP. We will measure the barrel thickness on the BB. Might be pretty close or the same because this was the version right before they switched to the F. And this guy is measuring right about 13.3. Um, so actually it's measuring slightly thicker than what does on my F, which isn't what all the books tell me. Also, these are the cheapest calipers I could find on Amazon. So we'll just say it's the same. <laughs> so the Umarex barrel is ever so slightly thinner in diameter compared to the actual one. The frame, I did measure right up here because I noticed it looks a little bit thicker on the Umarex, and it is. 
On the Umarex, it measured at 18 millimeters, whereas on the real deal, it measured at 16.1. And I did double check this measurement with my Beretta 81. That's a double stack. Um, and it's the same thickness. So this isn't any thicker up front um, than the double stack. The double stacks are just thicker back here in the grip. Um, the beaver tail went ahead and measured those two, which is this little guy right there. The Umarex measured at 15.6 millimeters. The Beretta measured at 16.1. Once again, same thickness as the frame. So back here, the beaver tail is ever so slightly thicker than on the Umarex. And once again, I did double measure this beaver tail with the one on the 81. Since it's double stack, it's the same. Slide thickness, which is another thing they've changed um, as they went on with the development of these 80 series, the Beretta did start to make the slide a little bit thicker. On the Umarex, it measured at 25 millimeters. And on the F, it measured at 27 millimeters. And I meant to measure the B. B is 27, just barely over. And I do remember that's where the F is, was as well, just barely over. So we'll measure the 81. Even though this is 32 ACP, I do believe the thickness was the same on the 380 first version of these. And as you can see, there is 24.9. So um, the slide thickness on the Umarex, while it is not matched that of the actual F or FS, the slide thickness is the same as the original versions of the Cheetah. There's a lot of little characteristics in this Umarex that are kind of would have been correct if it was an earlier version than the FS or the F, um, and that's one of them. So the slide thickness is the same as the original version of the 80 series, which is also known as the Cheetah. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Um, so just a little bit thinner on the Umarex than what it technically should be. The grip in the top section on the Umarex measured at about 34.3 millimeters. And it got ever so slightly fatter towards the base, measuring at 34.8 millimeters. Now for this measurement, obviously I didn't use the single stack. But I did use the double stack um, 32 ACP version, the uh, 81. And this does have the older style grips. Um, and I do believe these are ever so slightly thicker than what the 84 or the 84F and FS versions would have on them. But the grips on this one um, towards the top measured at 34.5, so ever so slightly thicker than on the Umarex. And then it actually thinned out just a little bit on this one as it went down towards the base, measuring at 34.3. So very small difference. Some of that could be attributed to the different style of grip panels that are on here. Um, but I'd say that's the grip is accurate enough to be considered accurate um, for these. Now the trigger pull I did test and I went ahead and put in a CO2 cartridge when I did that trigger pull because I'm not familiar enough with these BB gun mechanics um, to know if having the CO2 cartridge in it would or would not affect the trigger pull so I went ahead played it safe um, and put a CO2 uh, cartridge in there to my surprise it was a lot louder than I was expecting <laughs> Um, my wife kind of came into the room afterwards. I think she thought I had a negligent discharge of a 22 or something. Cause that's what it sounded like. It sounded like a 22, um, LR, um, pretty loud. So as far as realism, um, not as loud as the 380, which just would have originally been chambered in, but Beretta did make some 80 series guns that were chambered in 22. And even the 32 ACP, um, probably pretty close audibly to what these sound like with the CO2 in there. But anyways, I got an average trigger pull, and this is single action only, um, of five pounds, one ounces is what we averaged out. So um, not horrible, um, not great either. So I checked the trigger pull on this guy. Also keep in mind all of the real breads I have out here are surplus. Um, so they are used, so those triggers are pretty much probably broken into the point um, where they're a little bit lighter than a brand new um, gun. And I have no clue if the trigger on this Umarex would lighten up with use um, at all. So, But I did the trigger pull on this guy um, in single action, which this is both single action and double action. I'll get into the specifics of that in just a moment. Uh, single action trigger pull um, averaged out to be 2 pounds 12 ounces. 
So it's substantially lighter um, than what is on the Umarex, but you know you, you can't match everything there. And this has a pretty nice single action trigger. Now, like I said, this gun is also double action as well. And for viewers that aren't as gun savvy as most of my viewers, um, I'm going to kind of, I don't want to say dumb this video down, but get into a little more detail than I normally would. So on the Umarex, um, like I said, there's no CO2 tank in here. The way you would fire this is you'd have to pull the hammer back and then pull the trigger. Um, and then as the slide racks, it will push that hammer back again and you're ready to fire off another round. So if the hammer is down on this and you pull the trigger, nothing happens. That hammer has to be back. So on the actual Breda 80 series, um, it does function like that. You can pull the hammer back and pull the trigger and then the slide will go back and push the hammer back again and you can keep shooting away in single action. However, these are also double action. So you can carry it with the hammer down and when you need to use it, if you pull the trigger, the trigger pull will push that hammer back and drop it. So you do not have to physically come up and cock the hammer. Now what that does, it does give the trigger pull a longer distance to travel compared to single action. See how I pull that trigger back? So single action is typically a very nice, crisp, much easier to get an accurate shot off. Whereas double action, it's gonna be a longer pull and that trigger is substantially heavier than what it would be if the hammer was back. Also worth noting out, since this is double action, these later F and FS versions do have what's called the decocker. So if you push the safety all the way up, it drops that hammer down. If there was a round in the chamber, it would not have fired. Um, it drops the hammer down safely. So you don't have to put your thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger, and then you know risk dropping the hammer. Which these guns also still have fire pin blocks in there to help reduce any accidental discharge like that. Anyhow, that's your single action, double action. Um, so the double action pull on the actual Beretta 85 here, that averaged at to five pounds, eight ounces. So pretty much just about what the single action pull is um, on the Umarex here. One thing I did not do yet was weigh them, but I do have my scales. Yes, Brown Coat Nerd is moving up. We now have scales for all of your gun weighing and postage needs. I've used this once. How hard can it be, right? All right, we got set on ounces. So the Umarex here, we'll measure them both with just the gun, no mag in there. Umarex is weighing in at 19.1 ounces. Can't really see that, can you? The, let's get out the 81, since it's the double stack, with no mag in it. That comes in at 20.4 ounces, so not a huge difference there. Out of curiosity, we'll measure the single stack version. 21 ounces. So, let's go ahead. I'll throw in my spent CO2 cartridge so it is not a full tank. Everything is still safe here. Just to see how much weight that has. Put the mag in there. And then, of course, if you were to put BBs in there as well, add a little bit more to the weight. Hey, look at that. That brings us to just under 24 ounces. And where were we with this guy with no mag in there? 20. So at that point, the BB gun's actually a little bit heavier. We'll throw in an empty mag. 23 ounces. Um, so the weight is pretty stinking close on these. So Boomerang got that down, which that's pretty cool, in my opinion. So then, let's go over some of the finer details, starting at the front. Now, one thing you may have already noticed is our barrel is sticking out of the slide here just a smidge. Um, and none of the 80 series do that. Well, at least the 81 slash 82, 84 slash 85 do. There's quite a few, and there are some target versions. 
Anyhow, so the Umarex, the barrel does stick out just a little bit, and that is reminiscent of the 92s. Um, the barrel does stick out some on your standard 92s. They do have some versions where they don't, but most of them do. So they did not quite get that right. The front sight here is blacked out on the Umarex, whereas on the F, you can see it has a white dot. Now that white dot was an update to the sights they did um, when they switched to, I believe it was the BB upgrade. As you can see here on our original 81, it is just a blacked out front post that's milled in to the slide. I think I've seen a few of these where the um, sights pinned in and there's trying to be a replica of an 80 series. Those were always milled in. They do have the new 80X Cheetah that's coming out. And I do believe that front sight post is pinned in, but that's a completely different frame. There's not much, if any, parts interchangeability between the two. Um, they're just kind of reusing that name and kind of going with the original concept of the smaller frame. So the sights are a little bit different there. Obviously, we can also see a seam on the front of the slide there, which we do not have on the original. The frame is kind of angled off here, which is correct to the actual 80 series. It used to be kind of rounded off, but once they switched to the F and FS, it was angled off. So they do have that update correct. We also have the squared off trigger guard, which they got when they switched to the F. However, on the Umarex, along with the seam going down the frame, we also do not have any texturing on the front of that trigger guard, which we do on the real one. Also, I guess worth pointing out on the real one, we did have a guide rod that is metal. Some of these were kind of blued like this one, and other ones were just left in the white like this one. However, on the Umarex, no surprise. Um, I would have been surprised if it was metal, but this guide rod is actually just polymer. On the other side of the trigger guard, we do have a screw in the frame helping hold things together, which obviously we do not have on the original. The roll marks on these varied quite a bit. Um, a lot of these 80 series were made for the police or military. Um, and they were designated for police or military out of the factory, so they had slightly different roll marks than the 80 series that were made for the commercial market. So like I said, all of mine were actually intended for police or military, so getting a good comparison of the roll marks and how accurate they are with these models I have is not the best, but it does look fairly accurate. Um, the serial number location would even change on some of these. Like on this, the actual one, the serial number is just on the other side. Also, there is a whole lot of information on here, which is kind of typical of like Airsoft and BB guns. However, <laughs> the commercial versions of the actual 80 series, that's one of the things I hate about the later versions, the F and the FS, is that's pretty much how the actual um, guns looked. I think it might have had one or two less lines of text in there. There's a whole lot of information. It was all like warning information. So that is fairly accurate. <clears throat> As you can see on this one, it's just pretty plain. The one thing this is missing is any kind of PB mark for Pietro Beretta. See, this has got two spots there. Um, this does not have it on there anywhere. So... It should have a PB mark. Even the commercial ones, I'm pretty sure, had that PB mark. But, I mean, that's no big deal. Other than that, I think the marks are pretty darn accurate to the real thing. Um, the barrel on the original would have the caliber indicator. I don't know how well that's showing up. Caliber 9 short. Right under that is 380 auto. Um, in Europe, 380 auto is known as 9 short or Browning 9 short. Two different names, same cartridge. <clears throat> and then on the Umarex, obviously, we do not have any markings. I feel like on some of the Airsoft, I have seen these um, with that 380 mark, which kind of impressed me. I think it would be kind of fun if they put, like, you know, 177. Is that the caliber? Yeah. <laughs> .177 um, up here on the chambering. I thought that would have been kind of neat, but they didn't do it. We do have a fake extractor, which the real one has. There would have been a hole behind that extractor on the original ones. However, 
The early series had a longer extractor and no hole. So, minor difference there. Also on the real guns, you see how the slides kind of cut down a little bit. Your shell casing exits the gun that direction. So this is just kind of giving it just a little more space to make sure it doesn't get any hangups. The Umarex kind of has that. Um, not really, there's a little bit of a cutout over here, but it is different from this one. So they, they kind of got that right, but not quite. See, they look quite a bit different. It's quite a bit longer on the Umarex. The rear portion of the slide, I do love how they have that little fake pin in there <laughs> that the real ones have. However, you notice this one is rounded on top and this one is flat. I believe they became flat either on the B or BB upgrade, but on the originals, they were indeed round, like on the Umarex. However, this must be an 85 or 84. See, I told you guys, 84 FS. So the F and the FSs, along with the BB, would have had the flat portion on the top of the slide there. The back of the slide, the shape is pretty close, but it's, the angles are ever so slightly different. And then, of course, on the rear side, the Umarex on the right here is quite a bit narrower and is also missing that white dot on the back. However, the early series, I believe it was the early series and the Bs, um, had the narrower sight with no paint. So this has the sights of the original or B series um, 80. So there is that. Then the safety lever. That's another one that Umarex forgot to update. Safety lever is accurate and ambidextrous to the original ones. Keep in mind that shape there. However, once they switched to the F and FS, they extended that safety lever just a little bit. So once again, the safety lever is accurate, but just to the earlier versions of this gun. So it's really weird how Umarex did that, <laughs> unless this extended safety lever is something specifically that um, the Italian police ordered in the commercial ones. I mean, that, that could be a case. I don't have a commercial one in my possession to go off, but I can tell you that uh, this was police, this was their Guardia di Finanza, so kind of their IRS slash Miami Vice type stuff, um, it has this smaller one, and then this is a uh, prison guard, I forget what they're called, uh, but that's also the smaller style. So this does have that smaller style, whereas the one that I have actually has a slightly extended safety. The other thing that really bugged me watching videos on these was that hammer. Now when the hammer's down, it doesn't look that bad. You can see it's sticking out a little bit more. Actually, this kind of has a half cock position once you cock it. So we can make that one stick out just a hair more, but the profile is off. Now, you think the profile looks off now, just wait. So the hammer pulled back on the real deal. Hammer pulled back on the Umarex. Now, to someone that's not familiar with these real guns, they probably wouldn't even look twice at that. But that's that's the very first discrepancy I've noticed uh, when I was looking at these is just how hideous that hammer shape was. So that is way off. And I also do hate how you can see that kind of open seam there on the one side. And like I said earlier, these do not decock like the real thing. Obviously, um, they're single action only. Most single actions don't have a decocker. It is worth pointing out that the original versions of these guns, they did not have the decocker. Um, so that's accurate once again to the original. I do kind of wish this was double action and single action, but not a big deal. Like I said, I probably won't even be shooting it that much. So I just kind of got it as a novelty. Now the grip panels, I'm Im impressed with how close they got those to the look of the material. Feeling these, you can tell it's a little bit cheaper material than what this is made of. Screws on the Umarex are also kind of curved and glossy, whereas the screws on the bread are a little flatter and a matte finish on them. I did take these grip panels off and measure them up with the grip panels off my 81. In the real world, these grip panels are interchangeable on the double stack version. 
And there's a little ridge of plastic in here that wouldn't quite allow it to lay down on there flat. It looks like you could Dremel it out. However, when I lined up these screw holes, there's still kind of a gap back here. So I think you can make original grips work on the Umarex version. However, it's I, I think it's going to look a little goofy. It's going to be a little off. And that's another thing that kind of sucks. I wish Umarex would have got that correct because... Um, and there's all kinds of different grip options if you wanted to kind of spice up your BB pistol a little bit. That would have been a nice option. But they're not 100% interchangeable. However, I do think you could make it work. Um, mag release button is very similar in look. However, it's, it kind of sits in there flat. Let's get up even my early version. Um, it, it looks a little goofy. It's, it's close to the real deal, but it looks somewhat off, but not a big deal. We do have serrations on the Umarex on the front strap, just like we do on the real deal. Um, also, the trigger. Umarex did a very good job copying that trigger profile. Now you might notice there's a little nub on the back of the Umarex trigger. Um, that's not like, you know, them making it cheaply and leaving you know, mess ups on there or anything. The real one also has that little end it ever so slightly different profile. Um, but they all do have that little nub back there. So that nub on the back of the trigger is accurate to the real thing. Once again, the real one, once we switched to the BB, we had serrations on the front and back straps. You can see the Umrex has it on the front, but we're missing it on the back. Here's the original series. You can see how it's smooth on the front and back. But once they updated to the B or the BB, uh, they got serrations both on front and back. So you never have one. It's kind of, you know, half and half there. So kind of weird they got the serrations on the front right, but decided to skip out it um, on doing that for the back. So there is that. The magazines. are pretty close in size to the real thing. Now this mag I have here is for the 32, not the 380, but the sizes are pretty darn close. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to make this 32 ACP a 380, all I'd have to do is get the 380 magazine and a 380 slide and barrel off of the 82. Um, the frame would work just fine. So the general shape, pretty darn close to the real thing. As a matter of fact, this is a Vega holster intended for the police market. Um, that mag will, the CO2 mag, the BB gun mag, will fit in here. It's a little tight, so I did not push it all the way down because I didn't want it to stretch this out. Um, but if you've got one of these old surplus mags, or excuse me, surplus holsters that have a little spot for the mag, I do think you could make, um, if you've got like a spare one of these, make it fit in there and work. Or you could just get one of these more basic canvas holsters with no mag pouch at all. Tons of surplus um, holsters out there for the 80 series. Do not ask me how much I paid for that white one. It's embarrassing. I don't know why I did that. That was a special order from Italy. Um, another thing on the magazine, which I find interesting. One thing that kind of sucks is you have this little knob to tighten up the CO2 cartridge. Wish they could have made that where there's an indention in here like I've seen on some. So you just flip this up, but once it drops down, it's flush with the base plate. Um, but they didn't, but not a huge deal. That's no biggie. But the mags do drop free, as you can see. And that's because it's got a little spring-loaded doohickey here, which is kind of interesting because there is a spring right up in here on the real gun. It's being kept in by that cap. Um, which is the mainspring or the spring for the hammer. So I do not know if that is also the spring for the hammer. It's got a dual purpose there, but I thought that was kind of interesting. And I believe that is pretty much all I've got for you guys on this. Like I said, this isn't really a review of the Umarex here. I just wanted to get a video out there comparing the two. Um, I know a lot of people that are really into BB guns and stuff like that. They don't have... Um, access to the real thing so i just kind of want to put this out there as an informative video i'm not knocking umarex for 
not getting this 100% right. I don't, I wouldn't expect any company making copies like this to get it 100% right. I personally think they made a really good, um, did a really good job of it actually in making a copy to the point that I, I wanted to get one of these. I saw a lot of these differences before I ever even ordered it. But for you, um, those of you that are out there that do collect these and kind of want to know some of the real history and accuracies between your copy and the real thing, that's the whole purpose of this particular video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And of course, as always, stay safe and stay shiny.